from your local election headquarters. An ABC4 News Town Hall Special, America in Crisis, a positive path forward. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for this special presentation of ABC4 News. I'm Glenn Mills. Amid the pandemic and protests, we are exploring a positive path forward for an America in crisis. Tonight, we are joined by Utah Senator Mitt Romney. Senator Romney, great to have you on the show. Thanks so much for making time for us. Thanks, Glenn. Good to be with you again. Good to see you as well. Uh, we do want to begin our town hall with this question. Moving forward, how will you help people who have been devastated financially by this pandemic? We've seen millions of Americans lose their jobs. We've seen businesses shut down. What will you do as a senator to help those people get up and working again? Well, as you know, the first thing that we did already related to the CARES Act, which is having a program, the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, that kept businesses going and people hired, also, we sent $1,200 per adult, uh, $500 per child to, uh, to people across the country. Those things were certainly designed to, to help. And then we increased the unemployment benefit by some $600 a week. So there was a real rescue effort that was undertaken. And I expect that we will have another such effort, which I'm working on right now with other Republican and Democrat senators. We'll probably extend the Paycheck Protection Program. We'll probably extend unemployment insurance. I think we'll look for ways to limit liability that schools, universities, hospitals, and employers will have as a result of people getting COVID-19. We don't want to shut down the economy with lawsuits. And I hope we finally address the amount of debt we're adding and find a way to tackle our debt. Yeah, we're going to get into that in the next segment. We're going to talk specifically about the debt, but let's uh, stick with economic recovery if we can. Uh, could the economy, in your opinion, go through another shutdown like we have seen in the last couple of months? I think it's unlikely that, that there will be calls made by governors, and by the way, they'll be the ones that make the decisions uh, to close down the economy to the extent we, we did before. I think the reason for that is that when COVID first came to our country, we really didn't know what to expect. We didn't know how contagious it would be, how deadly it would be. The data that we're seeing now shows a couple of important things. One is wearing masks really reduces the spread in a very important way. And number two, the death rate is pretty substantial among older people and people that have uh, health crises of various kinds, but not very significant among younger people. And therefore, going forward, I think it's unlikely we'll shut down the entire economy if there were a, a spike of some kind. Instead, there'd be a more focused effort to test, contract trace people, and insist that those people that are at greatest risk take the greatest care to keep from getting the disease. Let's talk a little bit more about the balance between public health and economic health. You kind of uh, dove into it there just now, but there is a balance here and we're seeing this as a very divisive issue across the country. You know, some are of the mindset, open everything up and, you know, let things play out as they may. Others, we need to continue to shut things down and, and protect every individual. Where do you see the balance between economic and public health? Well, now that we have more information as a result of our experience with COVID-19 and the experience of other nations as well, uh, we can see that shutting down the economy does slow the spread of the disease and it saves lives. But it's also extraordinarily disruptive and it creates other kinds of challenges, health challenges as well, as people don't have places to go to work, as they don't have uh, employment opportunities, as, uh, as kids aren't going to school and so forth. So. I think at this stage, given what we know, we will we will move towards a more targeted effort. Uh, and, and by that, I mean helping businesses that, that are having a hard time keeping their doors open, keeping employees and jobs, uh, getting rescue funds to people that are out of work, uh, but not closing down the et entire economy, allowing older people like myself uh, and people who have health compromised conditions to take special care to be isolated, but letting younger people pretty much go back to uh, the way they were living before. But by the way, masks make a big difference. Uh, that's one of the things that we're learning. There were, uh, we've seen discussion over freedoms being taken away in this situation when we started to see, as you mentioned, states did it on a uh, case by case basis. Were you concerned at all about some of the things you were seeing across the country? One example would be a salon owner in Texas who refused to shut down her salon. She went to work, opened it up anyway, and then was thrown in jail. Any concerns there as far as uh, personal freedoms that we saw taken away potentially across the country? Well, in a health crisis, 
or for that matter, in a war or in a an insurgency of some kind, uh, uh, the, uh, the Constitution uh, allows the government to step in, in some cases to declare martial law or to take other uh, actions to protect the public. Uh, and uh, that's not unusual. It's consistent with our, our government system, our, our, our constitutional system. Uh, and, uh, and I know that, that many people feel that rights are being infringed. And the answer is yes, those rights are conditional upon our collective adherence to the Constitution and its principles. And if there is a disease which threatens a large number of our people, why there will be action taken to protect the public health. But as we found out now, um, the broad shutdown that, uh, that initially was associated with COVID-19 uh, is probably not going to be essential as we go forward, given the new information we have about the spread of the disease. All right, uh, Senator, stay with us. We're going to get back uh, to you right after the break. Still ahead, images of hardship all over the country. To pay for the pandemic response, the U.S. government has spent trillions. What it means for the country's financial future and the national debt.